start recording. All right. I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, at let's see 101 p.m so the this community development advisory committee meeting is being held by electronic participation pursuant to the municipality's procedural bylaw number 2020-020 as amended and section 238 3.1 of the municipal act 2001 as amended the video recording will be uploaded to the municipality of trent hills website following the meeting For everyone that uh, this is our first gathering in a virtual setting, uh, it'll be a little bit of listening and directing. And and uh, if you have any questions or, or uh, need some help, raise your hand. I'll be able to see everyone. There's only a small group and we'll be able to address it at the time. If uh, you're not engaged in the conversation, it's always wise to keep yourself on mute if possible, just to keep background noise to a minimum. And then we can, uh, as you're speaking, just get yourself off mute. If we can't hear you, don't worry, everyone will tell you. <laughs> First thing, we will need an approval of the, the agenda. It's recommended that the agenda for the Community Development Advisory Committee meeting of November 18th be received for approval. Can we get a mover and a seconder? Just raising, perfect, Emilio to move, Nancy to second, and I'll ask Doug to call the vote. Emilio? Just reply, uh, yes, yeah. Brenda? I'm using the fancy uh, signal with the thumb up. I see. So that's a yes. Uh, Nancy? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Kim? Yes. Uh, carried by five. Thank you. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest at all? Seeing none. Next, we have the approval of our last meeting minutes. Uh, it's recommended that the minutes of the Community Development Advisory Committee meeting held on December 18th, 2019 be received and approved as presented and amended. Can we get a mover and a seconder for the adoption of the minutes? Kathy to move, Kim to second. Doug, can you call the vote please? Kathy? Yes. <laughs> uh, George, have you connected? Oh, um, this could be George there. Uh, Kim? Yes. Emilio? Hello. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Brenda? Brenda? Thumbs up. Nancy? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, okay, carried by five. Thank you, Doug. Um, Hello, George. Hello. George. George if, Gordon here. If you can put your computer on mute. Um, okay. I'm guessing that's, we're getting a bit of feedback. Not bad. We'll see. We'll see how how this how it goes. It's it's not sounding too too bad. Um, just to get you up to date, George, we've just approved the minutes, so we have, we're not very far in. So looking at thank you. Looking at general business, uh, we have report C D A C dash two zero two zero dash zero two re community improvement plan review update, and I will. Uh, pass that over to Kira. Ooh, I nearly spoke without being unmuted. Caught myself. Um, so this is basically an update 
um, based on our um, lack of meetings and the, uh, the just the gap in time. So we did have our last meeting in December, and then we uh, the recommendations around the uh, CIP were circulated electronically and all the, the backgrounds outlined in the report. And so um, those recommendations were approved by council. So the changes that were recommended have been made and have been implemented. And you can see on the grants and incentive page at the Trent Hills website that um, the changes are now reflected there. So the new brochure has been created and uploaded. There's a style guide has been uploaded and the online form is operational. I've had um, two or three um, guinea pig applicants successfully navigate the online form and they did help me debug it a little bit and it's now um, working. So uh, to date in 2020, we've had six applications. Um, understandably, things are um, less than a typical year. So we have only um, expended around half. There's $42,000 remaining in the 2020 budget. Um, one of those projects is to be uh, approved already. It's pending, it's going to council on the 1st of December. So. Um, does anyone have any questions or uh, comments about the report? Woo Go. Okay. Kim, what I'll do um, from now, I'm, I'll keep a speakers list and then I'll mention your name and then you can unmute yourself and we'll have a discussion. So Kim, you go ahead. Okay, um, just a question on the 42,000 remaining, Can are we gonna be able to put that into, into 2021? Um, what we do is it does go into a, a specific reserve for CIP. Yeah, so, so it's if available. We get a lot next year, we'd have it. Yes, and how it works in past years when the um, subscription to the form has out um, spent the 75,000, then at that point in the report, we I add an extra um, line to the resolution um, seeking permission to go to the reserves to cover the amount. So when I do the reports to council, there's a running total on what the existing budget is. Like if approved, X number of dollars shall remain in the budget. And then when we expend that, then we add an extra line around seeking to approve to use from reserves. So that's the typical process. Okay, thanks. And by the way, congratulations on getting all of that done. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Nancy? Uh, just a couple questions, Kira. Do you keep track of uh, what is sort of housing and what is commercial? Yes. Okay, What's, what is the split? Like, do, is it mostly housing this year in particular or? No, this time it's a lot of, um, it's only one, two, of like the 2020, I have one, two, R. Um, housing and the other four are commercial. So six applications to are to do with housing. Um, it's a lot of signage this year and um, facade improvement. Uh, so the other second part is we did discuss uh, at the beginning of this year about increasing the amount because it hadn't been increased in I think since it started. Mm -hmm. Now given this is an exceptional year, um, it probably hasn't been discussed for the budget. But just wondering if we can get that on the uh, record that we probably should look at increasing that in the future. And that was in the report to council. I think that at this point we weren't seeking to, but we were going to continue to monitor it. And so, yeah, obviously I didn't um, ask for an increase this year, but I think we have a little bit of a cushion with the reserve, um, whatever gets rolled over. But I do think, uh, and I did let the treasurer know that to put it on the radar in terms of a potential increase in the near future. Um, because I, I do hope that as we come out of this, it will be that opportunity where things are getting done that maybe are on hold now that that will come in into the future. So yeah, I did, I kind of flagged it with the, with, you know, Jim as my director and Valerie too. Great. Thank you. Because as we, uh, because it has been expanded as well, so exactly, and we did get our first application within the new boundaries of like the official town limits. Um, that um, that that the most recently approved one is an example of that. Great, thank you. 
Kira, do you have an idea what is in the reserve currently, not including what we haven't used up this year? N no, I don't, but I can find out from Val. That's a, uh, with that reserve, it's only, a, it, it's only alloc allocated for the CIP purposes only. So as we're using that up, that would be a good time to, like Nancy said, readdress uh, how much we're allowing year to year. Yeah, exactly. Now it is permitted and we did use, um, it's it, to use the municipality can access those funds. And we did use some for the town square because um, it's within the CIP and improving public space, but um, that's the only time we've used it. So I would imagine we do have a, a, a good uh, reserve, but I'll find out and let you know at the next meeting. Perfect. Any other discussion on uh, this report? All right, seeing none it is recommended that staff report cdac 2020-02 by kira mees community development officer uh re community improvement plan review update be received for information can we get a mover and a seconder for that emilio move nancy second and doug will you please call the vote Daniel? yes Brenda? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Kathy? Yes. George? Yes. Kim? Yes. Carried by six. Thank you. Uh, going on to 5B, council motion number THC 200114-4 re possible 2020 committee initiatives uh kira do you have anything that you want to this is this came from our december minutes and went to council as our our recommendation for possible um initiatives and it was approved there so then this is the the direction from council around the committee mandate Perfect. Is there any discussion on uh, this report that went to council? Mm. Can we, uh, it's recommended that council motion number THC 200114-4 re possible 2020 committee initiatives be received. Can we get a mover and a seconder? Emilio moves. Kathy seconds, and Doug will call the vote. Emilio? Yes. yes. Brenda? Yes. Uh, Nancy? Yes. yes. Kathy? Yes. Kim? Uh, George? Nope. Uh, I think George's phone just cut out. Yeah. Kim? Yes. Uh, carried by five. Thank you. And next on our agenda is 5C, uh, downtown revitalization activities. Kira. So this kind of follows from the last one in terms of the, uh, the direction from council and our suggestion to them. Um, the I have two things to report on. One is the vacancy inventory, which um, we discussed before as being a kind of a, a challenging thing that I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not, but it's totally working. <laughs> I, uh, I spoke with Dawn at the chamber and she provided me a, a link, a list of a local real estate agents, and I reached out to them and explained what we were endeavoring to do. So this is kind of the first half because this is the the vacancy inventory in terms of what's up for sale. Um, but I've, they've added me to their email lists and stuff. And so now I get alerts every time a commercial property is listed and I have a current file on that. So um, half of the battle is good. Um, now the more challenging part is going to be uh, spaces that is available for rental um, because that I need to kind of um, coordinate with 
individual landlords, it won't be quite as easy, but that is um, kind of the next step on that. So, um, and I've already used it in terms of folks calling and inquiring about space. So that's exciting. And then the second thing, which I did distribute um, a very long time ago to, to you to review is the template in terms of that, the signage that we can share um, to help uh, vacant properties, um, you know, the development opportunity sign that Nancy recommended based on the things she'd seen in the US. And so um, that the, the templates designed, the designer did suggest we talked about individually like personalizing the sign for each property. The designer thought that that might be um, kind of create a lot of waste if they weren't reusable. So we've been talking about ways to maybe make them a bit more general. And as long as I had the information around, you know, the square footage and the permitted uses and all that jazz that I could share if I was contacted about the space, it might be the way to go. So that's one of the things I had to, to discuss with you today in terms of what you thought about making them a little bit more generic versus personalizing them for each um, property or vacancy. Did I send the picture to you of what the mock-up looked like? I can't remember that time. Okay. I don't I, remember seeing it. I will, I will share that with you and maybe I can even do it in the background while we're talking. <laughs> Thanks, Kira. Any discussion on, uh, on this topic? Uh, I have a comment. It's Brenda. Okay. Emilio, if you want to uh, start, Brenda, I'll put you on next. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Brenda. And um, I just wanted to, um, to just comment on this. Um, I remember the initiative to, uh, to do that, um, uh, to put those posters or that kind of information on the uh, window. But I, I, I been actually thinking that um, what we could do also is kind of stage the window so it looks nice uh, mm -hmm. also with information. So it's something that we can reuse, maybe, you know, a couple of curtains and, and a table with a candelabra or, or something like that. Um, just to stage, it's not just a blind uh, window, it's something nice uh, that we could use uh, while, while the, uh, um, the uh, place is still for rent or for sale. It's just a, 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 an idea. Thanks, Emilio. Brenda? Um, okay, and maybe if uh, Kira does get a sample of what that is, because Emilio and, and everyone else, what it is, it's actually a vinyl um, that goes in the window. And the ones that we saw in Frostburg, it was a very small community. But what impressed us was one of the panels was the information about the square footage and just you know, information for someone looking to rent. And then they also had panels about the community. So what else was available in the community, whether it was recreational wise, there could have been something about schools. I didn't get probably as close to it as what Nancy did, but they really looked like they, they popped. So they were right on the outside of the window. Um, and it was something that you just couldn't miss it walking by so it really made it colorful it's also informative and if we did them customized per vacancy then if somebody's down on a sunday um, they've got the information there it's not you know i've got to get back and call kira and it also alleviates a lot of the calls to kira because if you're getting one and it's been customized and someone's calling about a specific property they're interested and they want more info on that property Thanks, Brenda. Something possibly uh, in between is, is looking at one that has all the municipal information that's not going to change uh, on a, from property to property and, and then have a, a second one that would be unique to the property or where you could add the information for a specific property uh, to a section of it or something like that. I'm sure there's that could be a possibility with the with what we're able to do with technology and printing nowadays. Emilio? 
Um, yes, um, I just uh, I was thinking about um, um, maybe maybe that information can be in uh, in uh, um, uh, what's the name of else where we put um, um, the art um, stands kind of stuff um, and uh, with the staging and. Um, it's something that we may and actually get some um, um, portraits, you know, um, probably the good price, and even used ones in in um, in uh, um, summer by ourselves, and print our own. So it doesn't have to be, um, um, I, I guess, vinyl. It, it would be nice if it's in color. That we can actually present in in in, the, in those um, in front of the window in those uh, um, stands as a part of the staging. Yeah. So you Nick. can see. Uh, can everyone see that that I just shared? It's very big, so I can't really make it. Oh, there. So this is the the mock up, and so this was the section that. Um, Robert is the designer I've been working with that, you know, we would change out um, like specific for each property. So um, I don't anticipate we'd be printing dozens and dozens of these. So, I, you know, I wasn't quite so worried about um, having a lot of waste there. We could use a material where this was changeable potentially. Um, you know, sometimes if it's the the vinyl, you can change them, but that it's just an option. We I was thinking something kind of lightweight that we could, like Emilio says, maybe use an easel if it worked or have it right in the window, um, which might be ideal because then it's um, sometimes blocking what's behind the window. Um, <laughs> so, um, and I do have a photo, which I'm just kind of uh, trying to find. It's still in my email, I think, that Robert sent. He did a mock-up of it in a in a, a property just to show what it looks like. So, um, this, like like um, like Mike said, this would be static. Uh, the contact info about CIP and the business support from the chamber, if that's all right. So, it's it's kind of a first go, and this was just one of those projects that we we haven't made. Um, big progress on because of COVID and I wanted to to share it with you here. So Kim, Kim you had a question. Uh, yes, it, it might be useful to um, to uh, to address uh, putting the web the maybe the, the website um, on there because if someone is there during outside of business hours, they can for get sure. a lot more information on the with the website. Yeah. Nancy. Um, something that I kind of what attracted our attention with the other ones is they were very welcoming looking. Um, it felt like it was part of the community in the street, as opposed to looking very government looking. <laughs> And I know recently I was on a workshop and they were talking about how we need to be more welcoming than ever because all of our COVID posts right now tend to be more go government. We're completely guilty, more government focused. Mm -hmm. And I think if somebody's just walking along the street, more like a more of a welcoming style um, as opposed to very informational uh, might be an approach or like another panel maybe that covers off that. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of the multiple panels too, because it's like the this sign being stark might get someone's attention, but then something else would really draw them in. Um, like your the example you shared, I really like the kind of the panel effect too. Kim, go ahead. And doing it that way then if a property happens to be in Warkworth, there could be a Warkworth panel. Mm -hmm. You know, each each community could do a panel. With some information, maybe specifically oh. about that community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, the style of the community and some of the, as you said, as somebody said, I'm not sure who said, you know, what's, what's available in the community. 
you know, other things here. Right. Yeah. Any other discussion uh, on this one? George, I can't see you. Are you good with everything? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm sorry, last time when I was asked to respond, I hit my off button and turned my phone off instead yeah. of my mute. So I'm back now. Perfect, no problem. Okay, so it's recommended that the verbal information provided by Kira Mees, Community Development Officer, read Downtown Revitalization Activities be received. We get a mover and a seconder for that report. Nancy will move. Kim will second. Doug, can you call the vote, please? Nancy? Yes. Kathy? Yes. George? Yes. Kim? Yes. Emilio? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Carried by six. Thank you. Uh, on agenda item 4D, active transportation. Back to Kira. Hi. Uh, so this is a project that has been on the books here at Trent Hills for quite some time. And 2020 was supposed to be the year and it God willing, it might even be the start of it. So we, the tender's ready to go. And um, this is projects being overseen by uh, Jim Peters. And his suggestion was that uh, potentially it would be a good fit for the Community Development Advisory Committee to act as a citizens panel. As you're already um, an, an example or a, a, a cross section of the community and all three urban areas rec uh, represented. So, um, and I also think that it's a good fit with the Trent Severn Trail Town segue to our next presentation because uh, while designing the tender, I did um, make sure that there was water based active transportation included as part of the um, information to be surveyed. So, um, that's that's pretty much it. The tender, like I said, it's ready to go. And um, it's really about connectivity and looking at ways we can promote active transportation in the community, what exists and identifying gaps and that kind of stuff. So, and it's partly funded by the health unit. And so we've had it as a, a standing item and that grant money has been, been carried over. So uh, hope, and we, we of course have uh, also budgeted funds for it. So Kira, where does this, what, what is the tender, um, what is involved in this tender at the moment? It's a, a consultant to, to do the study. Um, and the kind of the typical format will be some public outreach and, and surveys and that kind of thing. But also uh, we would, um, be included, I think it's included, or at least it's part of the uh, discussion notes for the uh, consultant that we, we have this existing panel of a cross section of the community. So it's just a start uh, right now to get, get ideas, get discussions going on, uh, on what is needed for active transportation within the communities. And what we have in place already and then identifying the needs so we can kind of make plans. It would be an important part of a recreation master plan, for example, to have this information. Also, the, like the Trail Town Initiative in terms of looking at cycling infrastructure and paddling infrastructure, where those um, assets are and are not. Okay. Kim, I saw your hand. I'm not sure how that I think this dovetails into this and perhaps I should have asked it to be something separate, but I think when I look at um, under doing a project like this, I think we have to deal with washrooms. You know, if we're going to be doing and maybe the it's up to the consultant to find that out, 
But the more that and with the COVID situation and so on, the washrooms are really a big, a big issue. And um, at some point, our communities have to figure out how we're going to deal with public washrooms. Um, so I don't know whether we can put it into something we're doing to help support a project like that. Yeah, no, that's a good good point to uh, to look at when we we go forward with with this one for sure. Or is there a separate one that we recommend that can? I, yeah, I don't want to take us. I try not to take us off off the uh, agenda. But whether it goes into this or is it something big enough that we start we come forward and ask council to make it a priority outside of, of maybe this. This is a piece, but right. Yeah. We'll make that note. Yeah, uh, that's definitely something we can talk about. Any other discussion on active transportation thoughts, uh, questions, concerns? It looks like it's the. It'll, hopefully, it'll be the start, and it'll trigger some discussion uh, as we get some some information and some consulting and and uh, some input from the community as well. And, you know, it's always important to have these um, studies and plans in place as um, leverage in terms of grant applications. And so things like uh, washrooms, as an example, or other assets that we see as being needed, uh, having this um, study in hand is always really helpful. So it's an important step to have these things in place. Perfect. Thank you. It is recommended that the verbal information provided by Kira Mee's Community Development Officer, Reactive Transportation, be received. Can we get a mover and a seconder for that report? Kathy, move. Kim, second. And Doug, can you call the vote, please? Kathy? Yes. George? Yes. Thank you. Kim? Yes. Emilio? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Carried by six. Thank you. We'll move on to agenda item 5E. Uh, Trent Severn Trail Town Initiative. So welcome, Brenda. Uh, Brenda is going to give us a little insight onto uh, Trent Severn Trail Town. And uh, we're getting all the bells and whistles in this meeting. So we have a presentation. Hopefully everyone can see that coming up on the screen. And Brenda will walk us uh, through an update on where we are on Trent Severn Trail Towns. That's great. Thanks, Mike. I guess Kira is going to be the uh, the clicker because I don't think clicker. I don't um, think I can do it. Quick question: Is that just showing just the slide, or is is it the like? Okay, thank you. Yep, you're good. I think. Okay. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what we've been up to, uh, COVID hasn't slowed down our uh, the work that we're doing for the Trent Severn Trail Town program. And Kira, if you go to the next slide. Just tried to do some highlights for you to let you know what we're working on. Can I, it's not letting me change the page. It's hmm. not letting you go page down. Try your arrows on your keyboard here. I did that. I had problems yesterday with the mouse trying to advance it. It took a couple oh. of so Let me just try this one. Sorry, I'm going to share this screen instead. I can't. Okay, one sec. It looks to me like it's sharing, but it's not. So let me just try it over here.
Is it is that the next slide now? Yep. Okay. It just shows all of them, so it's not showing it individually, but that's okay. Um, it's not doing that. Okay. You know, in May, we had the brochures printed. So each of the nine communities that are designated Trent Severn Trail Towns, so Campbellford, Hastings, Lakefield, Buckhorn, Bob Cajun, Lindsay, Fenland Falls, Cobaconk, and Rosedale, um, each had a brochure designed specific for that community. So, you know, the welcome, the community history, we got some photos from Parks Canada, historic photos, and just had some general information on it. So those were, we printed 5,000 for each community, delivered them to each community. I know in Trent Hills, we dropped them off with Nancy at the chamber. Um, I know that in Hastings, some of the businesses took some as well. Um, and then Kira, if you go to the next slide, to accompany those brochures, we also had, and it was requested by our volunteer committee members to do some pull-up banners. So we did a large pull-up banner from the floor, and then we did a smaller tabletop banner. So these again are just promoting um, trail towns. They're all uh, a scenic view of the waterway, usually the lock. Um, but we did those so that with these portable banners, a business could use them, you know, if they wanted to highlight um, some some kind of special promotion for trail towns for the week. So um, there was a lot of flexibility with the banners. So those have all been created and delivered. And then the next slide, if we go down, Kira, it shows um, the Trent Severn Trail Town um, business friendly program. So that's uh, specific to businesses that register. Now we're in phase one for this. So phase one is attractions, accommodations, retail, and food and beverage. So if you're one of those businesses in any of the nine communities, um, you can apply to be a Trent Severn Trail Town friendly business. And uh, we've got about 75 uh, applications that we have had come through and processed. So it's just a picture of um, one of the providers with uh, the trail friendly logo in her, in her business, the window. And then, you know, again, flowing right through with taste of the Trent Severn. Um, we started that program very um, preliminary but um, we were pleased and we didn't even ask Mike this one, but uh, McGilla Caffey's did a Trail Town IPA and a Lock 18 Lager. So that flowed quite nicely into, um, you know, trying to get some product, uh, whether they're butter tarts, Trail Town butter tarts or something along that line. Um, Sideways uh, partnered with uh, Church Key and they came up with a specific and they have the Campbellford logo on it. So it's sideways trail town lager beer by church key brewing. Um, so we'll work on that uh, over the winter time and see if we can get some more product and it can be something new or it can be something that one of the businesses just renames it. And then the next slide is just our social media. So um, our social media accounts, they're all at TSW Trail Towns, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We've seen an increase in followers, more so on Facebook, um, but it's nice to see that we're getting some engagement. We're doing some posts, some videos. Um, so it's nice to see that it's starting to get out there. And our next slide for, uh, we've done a lot of photography and videography. Um, we've gone into the communities. This year was a little bit more challenging because we didn't want to get a lot of photography of people in masks. So we tried to get a lot of outdoor adventure where people, you know, uh, maybe were paddling or were on a bicycle and they didn't have a mask on. We did get some shots of shopping. Uh, so we tried to do a mix there of all of the communities. And then for our volunteer committees, um, one of the consultants that helped us develop this program, Amy Camp, she was kind enough to do four videos for us. The last one was just released today and I'll get it out to everyone, but it's specifically speaking to the volunteer committee members to keep them motivated, to share some best practices from across um, trail towns throughout the U.S. And I just put the, uh, the website on there, but it's on our rto8.com website. And then the next slide, you know, these are under construction. Um, we will be doing a TSWTrailTowns.ca website. 
So I can hear people cheering, Nancy, in the background, <laughs> um, because we'll be managing the website. Here's why we decided to manage and, and do a website specific to that is when you've got nine communities, some, some of the web pages, the landing pages are really awesome and some of them um, really need some help. So if we do this and when we change it over, it will be number one, a bilingual site. So it will be in English and French. We'll have support from Parks Canada because they'll refer um, from their website. They'll link to this site because it is bilingual. Um, and we also keep continuity for the brand and it just eases up some of the pressure on um, people that are trying to maintain the website themselves. Um, the trailhead signs for visitors, I call them trailhead, they're, lo they're the large four feet by five feet signs. Um, we do have a couple of designs that have come back. So working with an advisory group, um, just to take a look at the information that's on there. But once we get the design confirmed, there'll be one for each community created. And then it is defining uh, the location, whether it's on Parks Canada property or whether it's on municipal property and getting a quote to have them made. Right now, they're coming in at about 13 to $15,000 per sign. And uh, we're hoping to be able to get them in the ground this summer, uh, 2021. We also are looking at a virtual summit for all the volunteer committee members. Um, get out there and network over Zoom and uh, meet and greet and chat up what you guys are doing. And then uh, a review and update of the Trent Severn Trail Town strategic plan. It was created four years ago. So it's time to update that. So those are just some things that uh, we're gonna be working on over the next few months. Any questions? Thanks, Nancy. Yeah, is there any questions? Emilio. Yeah, Emilio. Hey, take me, I'll take on more to, to uh, unmute. Um, yeah, Brenda, um, of course to me, do we have um, during, uh, around the Trent Tavern, uh, any transportation company that go from point one to point D or something like that um, with uh, type cruise or something like that that we uh, um, or we can promote that as a, as a, uh, you know partner investors or something like that um, because of course to me that um, we could do something like a cruise going from Trenton and uh, this company X I don't know. Um, could actually have some stops in in different ports, and for instance, uh, spend a day in in Campbellford. So here's the attraction of Campbellford. So we will skip. And sorry about that, uh, Mike. We'll skip um, uh, Hastings and go to the next port. But coming back, you stop in Hastings and and um, um, skip Campbellford. So that way we can go through the whole thing and coming back. So it is not only the, um, that we can catch um, people with their own transportation from the US. There is a lot of people from, from Toronto and, and, and the, AG, um, the Great Toronto area, uh, GTA, that, um, that would like to, to come to that, uh, I'm sure. Okay, that's something that uh, 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 it's just the idea to find somebody, uh, an operator or company who would like to do that. Uh, the other thing is, um, uh, why not also add to that brochure another um, languages? Um, I'm, I work with sediment and uh, there is a lot of um, um, Cantonese, Persian and Spanish people around. Uh, they are coming also for visit, and 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 uh, in fact also Indians. So um, it should be actually interesting. We you can have uh, small quantities on, on different uh, um, languages. Okay, thank you. Nice to hear from you, Brenda. By the way, thanks, Emilio. Brenda. Okay, muchísimas gracias. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned a boat, um, a boat company, because uh, there is someone that is interested in opening up an operation at the south end 
Uh, I don't have a lot of details. It's very preliminary, but they are looking at setting up a base of operations in Hastings. It would be boat rentals. It could be something along the lines of houseboats and then other type of boats. Um, so they are looking at that. Um, unfortunately, because of uh, COVID, we have not been able to secure La Boat to open up an operation, a second operation on the Trent Severn Waterway. Uh, they operate on the Rideau successfully, but um, COVID slowed that down. So this waterway, um, Trent Severn Trail Town program is a great opportunity for land-based businesses, you know, outfitters and bait and tackle rentals and, you know, uh, bicycle rentals, um, kayak, canoe, paddle boards. So there's all of that, um, both on the water and off the water. So there's lots of business opportunity there for um, lots of potential. Uh, but I just don't have, I know the company is looking at Hastings. I've already met with them but I don't have a lot of the details. They're working with Northumberland County with Dan Borowiec, and I know that he's been in touch with uh, Municipality of Trent Hills. So hopefully we can see that. They'd like to open up operation um, next May. So keep you updated. Could be good news. Thanks, Brenda. Kim, I saw your hand there. Um, I wanted to ask how you, if you're going to deal with the issue of masks when inviting people into the community, I can understand you might not want them on the videos, um, but is there a consideration of that? I certainly know, you know, people here say, oh, they're coming from other communities and they're not wearing masks. <laughs> uh, has that been talked about? Yeah, on, on any of our social media posts and on the website, um, all of our DMOs, everyone has uh, the COVID, you know, what, what the rules are for this area. So the messaging does not go out unless it states very specifically that there are restrictions in the area. Perfect. Thanks, Brenda. Any other questions, comments, thoughts on uh, Trail Town or anything similar I might just add Mike that the at the HRA meeting last week um, Hastings is working on a Christmas by the river promotion so um, just uh, a, to kind of complement other things that are happening in Trent Hills the the businesses doing some promotions around um, shopping locally and um, I know that the BIA is doing the same thing in terms of looking at ways to promote local shopping. So I think there's a lot of um, alignment and support around the, um, what the, the trail town is doing in the communities. And, um, and then Warkworth of course has, uh, it's not a trail town, we count it as a trail town asset, um, but they have um, everything in place for their late night shopping on Fridays for Christmas. So um, everyone's trying their best to do everything they can to welcome people safely um, and also encourage locals to do their shopping locally. So I think a lot of these things are all kind of pulling in the same direction. Thanks, Vera. Nancy? And just to follow up a little bit on Emilio's suggestion there, there is the Corth of Voyager which is a cruise boat that does go up and down the Trent and into the Rideau. And in a typical year, they didn't operate this year. They stop in Hastings and Camelford about four times a year. So there certainly is an appetite for that, people cruising. Um, and they do spend the night in the community and they do get out and shop and support the community. So there's certainly an appetite for that. And uh, to Brenda's point there with that new company potentially opening up, that's a, a real benefit um, for Trail Town for sure. Thank you, Nancy. All right, if I don't see any other discussion, it's recommended that the verbal information provided by Brenda Wood, RTO8, re Trent Severn Trail Town Initiative be received for information. Can we get a mover and a seconder to receive that? Emilio move. Second, Nancy. And Doug, can you call the vote? Apologies, Emilio? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Nancy? Yes. 
Kathy? Yes. George? Yes. Kim? Yes. Carried by six. Thank you, Doug. Communications, seeing none. Uh, we That brings us to the end of our agenda. I, I want to just sort of remind people that if you ever have a thought, uh, a question, information, something that pops up, uh, don't be afraid to send it to myself, send it to Kira. We can get it on a, an agenda and just have a, a, a discussion on something if you think it's going to better uh, our communities or fit within our mandate of of the committee, it's, it's always good to have uh, those open discussions, uh, even if it's something small that uh, you never know, it may lead to, to other opportunities within the municipality. So don't be afraid at, you know, two o'clock in the morning when you can't sleep and you have this great idea to send it on through. Don't call me, but send me an email. <laughs> Can I, uh, Thanks to everyone for, for coming and we'll uh, call an adjournment. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Kathy and Kim, I'll take as a second. And Doug, can you call the vote, please? Kathy? Yes. George? Yes. Kim? Yes. Emilio? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Nancy? Yes. We are adjourned at 153.